we need to go ahead and take the derivative of our x cubed plus y cubed equals 3xy. Now, if you could actually go ahead and solve it for y, which I'm not thinking you probably could to get y by itself, you would end up getting this right here. Not exactly a real fun equation to take the derivative of. So a lot of times it's going to be easier just to do implicit differentiation. So we'll go ahead and do the implicit differentiation of this. Put the 3 in front, decrease your exponent by 1, multiply it by dx over dx, because it's the derivative of the inside of x with respect to x, but that's 1, so we don't need to write that. Look at your y cube, put the 3 in front, decrease your exponent by 1, derivative of the inside, which is y, with respect to x, or y prime, so dy dx, or y prime, either one, equals, and then on the right side, since you're multiplying your variables together, you need to use the product rule. So you'll do the derivative of the first, which is just your 3, because if you look at your 3 and your x together, your derivative of 3x is 3, times the second, which is just your y, plus, to keep the first the same, and then now you're going to do the derivative of your y, which is just y prime. Now, go ahead and get the y primes on one side, the non-y primes on the other side. So my 3y did not have any y primes, so I took it to the left side. This had a y prime, so I took it to the right side. Factor out your y prime on the right side. And divide by 3 to make it easier. Then you want to finish getting y prime by itself by dividing by what's in the parentheses. And there's your derivative. So now we need to go ahead and find our instantaneous rate of change at a particular point. Your instantaneous rate of change is another name for your derivative. So on the left side, we've got to do the derivative of the outside function, which is derivative of sine, which is cosine, so you keep the inside the same. Then you've got to multiply that by the derivative of the inside, so the derivative of your parentheses here, the derivative of x is 1. Derivative of the 2y is 2y prime, because whenever you're taking the derivative of a y, you've got to put a y prime equals, and then on the right side, since you have your 2x times your cosine y, you need to use the product rule. So you do the derivative of the first of 2x, which is 2, times the second, plus keep the first the same, which is 2x, times the derivative of your cosine of y, derivative of cosine of negative sine. Now you got to do it times the derivative of the very inside, derivative of y with respect to x, or y prime. Now we need to go ahead and solve it for y prime. So I'm going to just go ahead and distribute through on the left side. So we're taking our term in front right here, applying it to the 1, and that's where we get this right here taking our term in front here and applying it to our 2y prime, and that's where we get this part right here. Right side, just rewrite it a little bit there, because you have a negative right here, it comes in front as a negative, or a subtraction sign. Now you're going to want to go ahead and get your y primes on one side. In this case, I'm choosing to take my y primes to the right side. So this has a y prime that's staying there. This I'm taking to the right side. This did not have a y prime, so I'm taking it to the left side. On the right side then, go ahead and uh, pull out your y prime. get y prime by itself then, since it's being multiplied here, you want to go ahead and do some division. 
to divide both sides by what's in the parentheses. Now you're looking for your instantaneous rate of change at this one particular point. So then you got to plug in y being 0 and x being 0 because that's the coordinates of your point. When you do that, you get 1 half. So now we want to go ahead and find our second derivative. Since we have a product here, you'll need to do the product rule, and that's what this is. So it's nothing real big and challenging compared to what you were doing. Now you want to just go ahead and solve it for y prime. To solve it for y prime, distribute through the negative. Get your y primes on one side. Get your non-y primes on the other. Factor out your y prime. Divide but y by what y prime is being multiplied by. That's the parentheses. And we get our first derivative. Doing just what we have been doing. However, this particular problem is asking for your second derivative. And you should remember your second derivative is the derivative of your derivative. So we need to take what we have right here, which is a quotient. And we need to do the quotient rule on that. So, derivative of the top, derivative of your y is y prime, derivative of 2x is your 2, times the bottom, minus the top, times the derivative of the bottom. All over your denominator squared. Now we're going to go ahead and eliminate the parentheses on the top. So go ahead and do your foiling. You have some like terms. So you can combine together your like terms. And when you combine all these like terms together, the whole top just reduces down to this. Now, we're looking for our second derivative. But we have a y prime in here, so we need to eliminate that y prime. We know y prime right here is this, so all we have to do is plug that in. Then all we have to do is... Uh, Eliminate your parentheses. We have a fraction within a fraction. So our denominator here was this. So I'm going to multiply the whole top by this and the whole bottom by that. Now when I take this whole thing right here, times this first term, because this whole thing right here is your first term, that undoes your denominator. So it leaves you just with this right here onto these. Then you need to go ahead and take this onto that and distribute through. Once again, going ahead and collecting your like terms on top. You'll notice then we do have a common factor of a negative 6 we could pull out. Your negative 6 you can pull out what's in the box here. That's the same as your original problem. So anything in the box you can replace with your 9. So the whole top is a negative 6 times 9 or a negative 54 on top over the denominator cubed. 